Well, hello, welcome back uh, to the channel. Uh, today, we're gonna be working on uh, getting the wrist pins out of a couple of pistons uh, that are seized up um, using the 20 ton shot press. So if that's something that you're interested in, stick around, because it's coming up. All right, uh, so I got this little 20 ton uh, shot press, a good old Harbor Freight special. Uh, when you when when you buy that from Harbor Freight, which is the way I bought it, it came with a manual uh, jack on it, 20 ton jack. So I went ahead and bought a pneumatic uh, jack um, to replace the manual. So I didn't want to sit there and be cranking around on it every time I want to do something. I wanted to be able to just get it done. So uh, that's obviously been installed for a while. I've had this uh, press for several years now. Uh, when I built my building, if you watched any of those videos, I put the uh, in-the-wall air system to supply air for air tools and and what have you. And so I put one of my outlets uh, right here as well with a quick coupler. And then just a little bitty three-foot hose, and then that will connect right up to my uh, valve for the jack. So anyway, I got that set up. I've got my wrist pin that's locked up in there. I've already knocked a couple of them out and uh, I didn't get the video of that, but uh, here's one of them that I had to uh, press out. It was in there pretty tight. The three over there, they came out fine. So anyway, let's uh, flop over here uh, to the shop press and I'll go ahead and just push those pins out. And then I'll tell you what these pistons go to and what we're getting ready to do. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and push the wrist pin out on this piston here. Um, first thing, I'm just gonna take a hardened uh, socket right here, so it's for an air impact. And that's what I'm gonna use to, to push that thing to get started. And then once I get it broke free, I'll go ahead and use this little four inch extension uh, to press it on, on through. So I basically just found me a socket that would fit the wrist pin and still be a little bit loose so I don't want it to get caught in there. Now I'm just going to line that up with my press here. Line it up with my hole at the bottom. Make sure you wear safety glasses in case this thing wants to break apart. These pistons are aluminum. Alright, so I just got pressure on it then I'm going to get back out of the way in case something goes haywire here. And I'll just leave this camera right up here where you can see the action. And I'm just gonna do it easy. Okay, it's starting to move now. All right, I'm just push it down until I'm about flush with the uh, piston. We'll go ahead and lift this up. Should be about where I need to be. We'll pull that out and I'm going to put my extension in here upside down. I need to go up just a smidgen. Okay. And we're just going to do the same thing. I'm going to line everything up. You can see right down there is the wrist pin. And I'm going to put a little pressure on it. All right, there's my pressure. I'm going to move. Now I'm just going to feel to, to see when my connecting rod becomes loose. You can see that right there, so I'm down past it. That's as far as I need to go. I don't need to press that pin all the way out. These pistons are junk. So go ahead and lift, get my uh, press back where it needs to go. And voila. There we are, got my connecting rod out. And now, when this goes to the machine shop, they will have what they need. There's the pin. So anyway, that's using the 20 ton shop press from Harbor Freight and uh, added that pneumatic uh, bottle jack to it to just make things go a lot quicker and smoother. So the question is, why am I taking connecting rods off of this piston? Well, let me tell you why. 
All right, so if you have been a subscriber and been following along with my projects, now one of my early on projects was the Alice Chandler's WD-45 diesel. It's got the boot S6 cylinder, and that's what we're getting ready to take to the machine shop. So I had uh, several pistons that were froze, and I had to uh, soak them and get them knocked out, which I did. Um, but I need to get my connecting rods out so that the machine shop can, uh, they're gonna, I'm gonna have a line board and then they can go ahead and uh, bore the connecting rods as well. Got my crankshaft over here on the left side. It'll be magnafluxed and turned. And I think right now I had 20,000 oversized bearings in it. So uh, from what I'm hearing, you can get up to 40 thousandths over on your bearing. So we'll see what kind of shape the crankshaft is in. Um, if it is, um, if it's got a crack or something in it, once they magnaflux it, then I'll have to grab a crank that I got up there in my parts shop. So I've got a couple of extras up there that I bought uh, just in case I needed it. So here is the head. I'm gonna have them put new guides in and they're gonna have to put new valve seats as well. Uh, looks a little odd there. I've got the uh, intake and exhaust valve uh, on that other end just flipped upside down. I took them out. So I wanna check everything out and that'll let my machinist know uh, what I got. So I've got that squared away for him um, on the block. Like I said, I'm, I'm gonna have it line board if it needs it. They will magnaflux it as well. And then one thing that we're, or I'm kind of concerned about is right there by the, the drain, you can see that crack. I got a crack right here, all the way across through there. there there's not any remnants of oil or anything that was seeping out on the inside there's a there's a thick piece right through there and I believe it's the bottom side of where the liner is um, so I don't know if it's cracked right on the bottom edge and I couldn't feel it or see it or what but once they magnaflux that uh, we're gonna see what we've got and uh, see if they can they can fix that so we'll kind of see what we've got uh, once the machinist gets his hands on it so anyway yeah that's the update on the 45 uh, diesel getting ready to take everything into the machine shop get that work done um, kind of got preoccupied by a few other projects I've got several of you all are asking about it um, so we're gonna be getting back on it very soon uh, one thing I forgot to mention while it's there I'm gonna have the head bolts uh, or studs pulled out of it and we're gonna put ARP uh, studs in it so I'm gonna have him do that he'll deck it um, he'll probably uh, straighten up the bottom side of the head as well, make sure everything's nice and true. Uh, do the counter boards. Anytime you take any kind of material off of the top of that, you're going to have to open your counter board up as well. That way your sleeves will slide. And just like the typical Buddha, uh, I've got some cracks between uh, one and two and five and six. Actually, one, two, three four, five, and six. The only one that's got the thick uh, area between it is right here between three and four. Everything else is real thin. So it's got some cracks there. Um, nothing major. What you gotta watch for is if the bottom side where your liner uh, fills in with the ring seals, the O-rings, if it's cracked there, that's where you'll have problems because you'll have water and oil mixture. On the top side here, that will get sealed up with your head gasket. Don't go cheap on your head gaskets. Get a good, good head gasket and you should be fine. So anyway, that's the update on it. Uh, thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe, share the video, leave a comment below. Until next time.